Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the <laughs> Bayonne City Council um, March meeting. I would like to advise all those present that notice of this regular meeting of the Municipal Council of the City of Bayonne of March 17th, 2021, has provided to the public in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey. Notice of time of time and place of this has been included in the annual notice of meeting, which was posted and filed with the Jersey Journal and the Star Ledger within the required time. An additional notice and time and place of the meeting was posted and filed with the city clerk and forwarded to the Jersey Journal and the Star Ledger by fax on March 12, 2021. A notice was hereby given that the Municipal Council of the City of Bayonne will conduct this meeting via virtual remote communications equipment in conformance with the directives of the executive order of the state of New Jersey for the purpose of conducting city business. The regular meeting of the Municipal Council of the City of Bayonne is now in session. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United I mean, States of America. Allegiance to the flag of which is which stands. Stands. one nation under God, God indivisible, nation. with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, mm -hmm. Madeline. I think I did it backwards, but that's okay. Uh, Councilman Carroll here. Blaze is absent for the moment. Mr. Lapalooza. Here. Okay. Mr. Perez. Here. Ms. Nadrowski. Here. Before we get started, first of all, today is March 17th. Um, so I'd like to wish everyone a, a happy St. Patty's Day, safe St. Patty's Day. Unfortunately, our parade in Bayonne's canceled again, but we still encourage you to celebrate the Irish culture in a safe uh, manner. Um, with that being said, it's also National Women's Month. I gave a, a statement um, at a caucus meeting, recognizing, you know, National Women's Month is about recognizing women, giving them a voice, um, that they matter, seeing women rise up in power and taking on roles. Um, that's what Women's Month is about. But I'm gonna defer to Melissa Matthews, the City BA, wanted to make a statement about um, Women's Month and thanking some of our employees here. So, um, Ms. Matthews? I'm here. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you, Council President Sharon Nadrowski and uh, all the council members for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Um, I just really wanted to take a moment um, in this month because I wanted to thank all of the women in the community that are making a difference. I think the goal of these programs, like Women's History Month, is to highlight the impact that they're making, um, that they have made in the past, and that they're continuing to make, building our future. So in addition, we really need to look at some of the inequalities um, and continued discrimination in the system. What often happens in these months is that we celebrate the women who've made the headlines, uh, the women that have made major changes and progress towards equality, and their impact is great and absolutely worthy of celebration and recognition, but so too is the impact of every single woman that is working hard to make a difference and fight for her what, what's right for her community. I think sometimes these women feel that their impact is unseen because their jobs aren't all that glamorous. And I think it's, uh, sorry, I'm talking so fast. <laughs> I think it's time for us just to really focus on our colleagues and the workers that often get overlooked or feel like they're undervalued. Um, and we just appreciate all of the impact that all women have um, every single day. They're not voiceless, they're not unseen, and they're not alone. We're all in this together. We're all here and we need to just look around us and see the work that everybody's doing. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. It's all you, Madeline. Okay. First item is an ordinance of the city of Bayonne County of Hudson, New Jersey, amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne chapter 35, zoning regulations and chapter four, license reg registration and business regulations, which was introduced and passed at a first reading of December 19, 2020 and was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law with notice that it would be further considered at the meeting of January 20th, 2021 for a public hearing and a hearing, which was then postponed to the meeting of February 2017 and is now before the council at this meeting March 17th for a public hearing and final passage. And since it was already given a second reading, the council is ready, now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. Any 
Are any speakers on 01? There is uh, nothing that I see. So, no protest against objections to or statements in favor of this ordinance has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? Hold it. Second. And on a resolution for final passage. Anyone want to move for a final move passage? It. Move it. Second. So oh, then I forgot to take a motion. I need a on the motion to close. Carol. Aye. I take the Mr. Galay. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. And on the most on the residence ordering res, resolution ordering final passage, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Ms. Lapalusa. Mr. Lapalusa, your vote on final passage. He's saying aye. We can't hear him. I can't hear, I can't hear you, Gary. Aye. Oh, there you go. You're on delay, Gary. Okay. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. Uh, aye. Can you hear me? <laughs> Heard you. Um, aye. Oh, two. Oh, my. Gary, did you have uh, surgery today? I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you? You're hearing him from five minutes ago, so. No. You want to, you want to take like two minutes, let him sign off and on again? Maybe that'll help. Gary, are you going to go Gary, out? I think Mikey's going in and out. Should I sign out and come back? What do you think? Yeah, Gary, I think you're best served by signing out and then signing back in well wait and getting a different internet service of course that's why i'm downstairs because i'm hardwired in today that's why i come back here because i can get everything i need to... i thought everyone was just celebrating st patty's day early i don't know well you have to don't the bars close at eight not anymore. Oh, okay. Well, not that I'm going to a bar. But <laughs> Oops. Get my. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Much yeah. better. Okay. O2 is a bond ordinance providing for various improvements to the Bayonne Public Library by and in the city of Bayonne in the county of Hudson State in New Jersey, appropriating $2 million therefore, including the bonds to be received from the state of New Jersey's Construction Bond Act grant program and authorizing the issuance of $650,000 in bonds or notes of the city to finance part of the cost thereof, which was introduced at the first reading at the meeting held February 17th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law, with notice that it be further considered following final four final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of March 17th, is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution moved by Councilmember Lapalusa giving the resolution second, the ordinance second reading. Mr. Lapalusa, we, uh, Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Oh, I lost him again. Okay, I can see him. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. Second reading is by title, and it's a bond ordinance providing for the various improvements to the Bayonne Public Library by and in the city of Bayonne in the county of Hudson State, New Jersey, appropriating $2 million thereof, 
including the grant to be received from the State of New Jersey Construction Board Act grant program and authorizing the issuance of $650,000 in bonds or notes of the city to finance part of the course thereof. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. All right, um, we've got two people. Uh, I will say there is someone who um, wanted to speak on the first matter. But uh, okay, okay, um, okay. Well, we'll finish this one first. Um, it was a JP. Who wants to speak on this one? Edward Grimes does. That he wants to speak on the first one. Oh, Edward, I'm sorry. Uh, no, he wants to speak on this current one. On the library. I believe so. We can uh, we can unmute him, but I'm sure he wants to speak on the first one. Okay. Hello, Mr. Grimes. There we go. He's self muted. Hello, Hello, Mr. Grimes. How are you? Hi, good, good evening. Um, I, I couldn't get my hand raised for the first ordinance. The first ordinance was about the cannabis uh, zoning. Yeah. Uh, Did I miss yeah. it? Yeah, but you could speak on it. Okay. I, I, could, um, I did want to speak on that. Um, I am part of, um, my name is Lefty Grimes. I'm in a 501c3 called sativacross.org. We advocate for disabled people, for wheelchair rights, and for cannabis uh, patients' rights. And uh, I'm happy to see that the council uh, has taken a proactive approach on this. Um, I believe some towns are enacting a 2% tax on medical. I don't know if I agree with that or not. I, I probably don't because I don't feel like the sick and dying should be nickel and dimed. But however, if you do consider this tax, because I, I believe it's inevitable, um, that we have taxation with representation. So if you do tax somebody uh, in a wheelchair I, with cancer, can can we can we represent them by giving them wheelchair access throughout Bayonne? Um, and I'm just talking maybe one step. If you have one step business with one step, um, you can partner with the city to maybe go in halves uh, to get that I, fixed. Can you hear me? Yes, we yeah, can. I'm, you can. I'm hearing something. Okay. That's okay. Um, partnering with the city to maybe fix the wheelchair uh, access issues for people that are sick and suffering because people in wheelchairs, not only are going to have the 2% tax, they're also taxed out of some uh, businesses in the urban enterprise zone because in the in UEZ, there's tax breaks, but for some people in uh, wheelchairs, they can't access those businesses. So therefore they're not accessing those same tax breaks that other, other people can. We are, uh, I could just for, you, know. you guys know, uh, you know, uh, what we do, we're trying to. Absolutely, Mr. Huh? Grimes, we're, we're familiar with you. I could just let you know, we are, we do have in our um, ordinance that we are instituting the, the tax that we're allowed to. Uh, so we, yes, we will be doing that. Um, second of all, uh, you know, it's not just medical marijuana. So, you know, it's more geared, you know, I mean, they fall under it if they're buying it without a prescription, but it's for tax and for mostly for recreational. That is the idea of it. Um, and any new building, as you know, has to be ADA compliant. Um, so we'll have, I understand what you're saying. We've had this discussion. We encourage businesses to, we offered business um, some stuff to uh, incentives to make their their stores wheelchair compliant and all new buildings must comply with the law and be ADA compliant. Well, see, um, the problem though is that, um, I'm sorry, but the problem is a lot of people are just fixing their, their fronts of their buildings. They're not putting in a new building. Oh. They're just doing a whole new front and they're putting in a new step. <laughs> so maybe for new, any kind of new construction, maybe an ordinance could be, um, adopted where it's if it's one step one step is fixable i can see two or three being a problem but one step surely that's 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 a fixable problem and a lot of the bayon issues are one step problems that's all okay thank, thank you, you. I appreciate the time. any okay, questions Jake. yeah we've actually got a few hands raised now uh, next we have uh, robert gill for which one this is for the cannabis regulation. Okay. Um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. It was regarding zoning um, and if uh, if Broadway, for 447 Broadway and that stretch of Broadway would be considered zoned. No, this is not. This, 
This this does not actually address zoning. That will be addressed in the zoning um, ordinance that will be passed at a, a later date. This actually doesn't speak to that. I believe, Jay, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It just restricts that you, we will require a license and you will be able to have to apply, pay an application fee. You will have to renew yearly and pay a yearly fee. It restricts the number of um, distribution, distributors we have, resale, wholesalers and growers that we will allow in the town. We will have one grower and two both of the uh, distribution and um, resale, retailer, retail sales. This is the gist of this, this ordinance. It's just requiring licensing that will be given out by the town and restricting the number and the type of licenses of each number we would give out. But there will, there will be for, further zoning regulations. Understood. Okay. Well, uh, I'd like to actually take this opportunity to introduce myself. <clears throat> I'm, uh, my name is Rob Gill. I'm, I'm a cannabis advocate. I've been involved in the cannabis industry for over a decade. Uh, and what, <clears throat> what I'm about to say kind of speaks to what the gentleman was uh, re requesting earlier. But I, along with my partners, uh, are petitioning the state of New Jersey to award us a license for a cannabis dispensary in the city of Bayonne. Uh, <clears throat> I am not from Bayonne, but I am a frequent visitor to the city, uh, as I do have a few friends that live in town, a couple of which that have been lifelong residents. Uh, I know that cannabis is a somewhat controversial topic, but uh, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, is that people have voted it in, it's here to stay, and then, you know, you guys just approved uh, a couple of dispensaries, distros, and uh, a grow, right? <clears throat> so uh, to, to the naysayers that are, you know, on board and listening, you know, it's not all bad news. Uh, as we just discussed, there is a 2% city um, tax that can be collected off of all of the cannabis sales within the, the city limits. Uh, and in addition to that, <clears throat> my group and I would be uh, offering uh, another healthy percentage of give back to the city of Bayonne, targeted towards the aiding the seniors and... Uh, that, and the um, wait, wait, I'm just going to... Yeah. Jay, um, you know what, Ms. Hill, I appreciate what you're saying, um, but... Mm -hmm. This isn't the forum to make a pitch to or, or what you're offering, right? Because this is this is just a hearing on the passing of what's contained within this resolution, and none of that's contained within this resolution. As a matter of fact, it actually says in this re resolution that establishing the zoning and license requirement are are reserved for future. Um, you know that you're you're kind of making a pitch why you want to be the thing. That would be something you have to come into the city. First of all, you have to be approved by the state and have to be approved by a state funded bank and all that. There's a whole bunch of other requirements before you even get to get city approval or consideration. And when we have the application, you'll be able to then submit it and you can make your case at that time um, to the committee that will, will rule on that. You know, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Absolutely. but it's just not yeah. um, relevant to th what we're talking about right now, this ordinance. That, that stuff is not contained in this ordinance. Understood. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I was trying to use that as an opportunity to introduce myself to the community, um, and and I am I'm aware of the uh, of the meetings we would have to have with the council and uh, and uh, the zoning committees and such. So, um, exactly. just just to let you guys know, I'm here. I'm online uh, for your city residents that have any questions about what a dispensary uh, could it could mean for them. Uh, I'm happy to answer any of those questions uh, on on that side of the fence. Uh, just Here's a resource then. Thank you for your time. Okay, okay thank you. Anybody else, um, Jake, on um, cannabis, I guess? We can yeah, I believe we up. have one more, and that's uh, Hugh Giordano. Okay. And I've unmuted you, Hugh. You just need to unmute yourself. Excellent. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Uh, first off, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Uh, to the city of Bayonne uh, for taking leadership role in um, having the conversations about cannabis and at least doing what you need to do on a regulatory level to set up a system uh, for your city. Um, I think it's a great, uh, I think cities need to be, we hear all the news about cities and towns and boroughs that are blocking and banning both adult use and medical. And I just think it's good uh, to see a city taking a proactive approach especially caring about patients, listening to their needs, but also uh, as the representative uh, for the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, I did call the last meeting as well. Um, just wanted to touch base again and say, I hope that uh, the regulations going forward will have labor standards 
that you will look at past practices of companies, how they treated workers, how they treated patients, how they care about labor standards, workers' rights, uh, having a collective bargaining agreement uh, from seed to sale, uh, how they fund social equity plans. I think all these things need to matter. Um, and I'm sure that you're having these conversations, but we just wanted you to know uh, that the UFCW is here. We support you. We support the leadership of Bayonne. Um, and we look forward to working with you in the future. And keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think we can move on to the library now. Um, Jake? I believe so. Um, hopefully, you know, we have two other people. I don't okay. know what they're going to speak on because the hands came out of nowhere. But okay. next we have Amy Van Skyver. Uh, yes, good evening. I was looking to speak on cannabis. I have hand, had my hand raised. Um, my name is Jamie Van Skyver. I'm from Paulsboro, New Jersey. Um, a medical cannabis patient in the state. And I am also with Sativa Cross nonprofit. Um, I'd like to ask you to reconsider the tax on medical. Um, I know other towns are doing it, but that doesn't make it right. I was at a council meeting last night and other people at that council meeting said, you know, we'd be foolish not to. Just because people are doing something doesn't make it right and doesn't make it moral or ethical. We're talking about medicine versus recreational. Things like alcohol, cigarettes, that's tax. Is insulin tax? Are other people's medication taxed? These are sick and dying people, and they're right in there in the same tax category with people doing recreational amusement. I don't think it's fair. I understand the position. I understand other people are doing it. I understand the revenue. Maybe if you could consider that if it's an absolute must, that when these establishments do start generating recreational revenue, maybe you could step back and take it easy on the medical patients and take that hardship away. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Keep on coming in. Uh, next we have Jeff. Uh, all right, but if their hand wasn't raised, only the people's hands who were raised. Nobody, if they're not going to talk on cannabis now. It's really over. So oh. no new hands on cannabis. So gotcha. This is the last one. So Got if it. there are any hands that has come up now, Jake, if they're not, you can let them through. And if they're cannabis, though, they're it's it's closed. That good. Okay, Jeffrey, you're just self muted right now. Hello, uh, Jeff King, Eatontown. I uh, really do appreciate very much value the opportunity to have my public comment on this. It's an important issue, have really strong feelings on it, and I do agree with all of the other callers, Mr. Grimes, Ms. Van Skyver, Mr. Giordano, uh, definitely want uh, to see equitable and fair um, operation in your municipality. I think it's really important that uh, you are progressive and you do get excellent service for the patients. It's really important. It matters a lot. And just as important is that 2% tax is very tough on people who have to decide whether they want to eat or pay their heating bill or take their medicine. It's not covered by insurance. So I agree with uh, Jamie in saying, let the recreational people subsidize the patients and take the money that you do make out of this, which will be substantial, and put it back into the community for people who have disabilities and people with special needs, anyone that is struggling to get by, we can do better by them. This is an opportunity to make the whole community better and, and safer and healthier. So I do applaud you for welcoming cannabis into your community. That's progressive. It's just a little conservative the way you're implementing it, but I, I understand it's a tightrope and I respect that you're on the right track. So if you uh, take our comments, into consideration, it is much appreciated. Thank you kindly. Good evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Going forward, any questions on the bond ordinance? On the library, um, 
uh, JP, um, our library director is on the line J, um, on the meeting, JP Picarero. And yeah. um, I believe JP, you wanted to speak on this? Uh, yeah, just take five minutes. I just wanted to again uh, say thank you to the city council for supporting us on this. Can you hear me by the way? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, great. Um, we're one of 29 libraries that got this first round of, of construction grants. Uh, and we'll be doing uh, about five large projects with this money. Um, if you'd like, I could tell you what they are. If not, I, I just really happy to be working with you all moving forward. You, you can list them quickly if you want yeah. so people, uh, so our taxpayers okay. know what yeah, they're- Yeah, um, so I've been for. director here for three years and one of the big issues I had from day one is we've got leaks all over the building. The building was built in 1900 something, 1907, and then the wings outside of the library, which is a beautiful building, by the way, it, for all residents. The the wings were built in the 30s. Now the 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 storm drains that go throughout the building, they're from the 30s, and they go they're actually in the walls, so they're just spitting water all throughout the building. It's going to be great to get those replaced. Our boiler is original. Um, to the to the building as well, so the, the boiler systems will be upgraded. One of the sort of unfortunate parts about the boiler system and when the building was built is that a, a lot of the lining is is you you know asbestos containing. Now that's safe for us in the library, but once we've got construction going, it stops being safe. So we're going to be abating all the asbestos, um, you know, following all the uh, the regulation regulations and such. Um, so we're really just updating the, the insides of the building. So that way it's, it's as beautiful, you know, sort of on the inside and it stays uh, beautiful. Another thing, you know, this kind of goes to the last, we are updating uh, most of our public areas to be barrier free, which in the last uh, ordinance we were calling, um, you know, ADA accessible and things like that. So this will be a really great for all the residents of Bayonne to be able to have barrier-free access to every public area of the library. I'm very proud and happy about that. We'll be expanding the size of the children's room, which again, I'm really excited about. And also um, we'll be just uh, sort of sealing up the, the crumbling outsides. So that way the outside stays as beautiful as it is now. And um, I'm really excited to be moving forward on it. We have yet to get the actual grant agreement back from the state of New Jersey, but they haven't sent them back to anyone yet. But as soon as we get it back, I'll be working with you all over at City Hall to, to get moving on the next steps. And so I really wanna say one more time, thank you to the city council for supporting us in this process, because without you guys, we wouldn't even have been able to apply. And without this bond ordinance that you're making, we wouldn't be able to receive the grant. So thank you again. Thank you, JP. Um, we're excited and looking forward to all the new improvements you're going to be doing over there. We can't wait to to see it. So good luck. Oh, and happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. I like the sweater. <laughs> okay, Madeline, is any any other hands raised, Jake? No, we're good for now. Okay. No protest against objections to or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? So moved. So moved. Second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Najowski. Aye. And resolution ordering final passage. So moved. Second. Second. And on the resolution for final passage, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. So is a refunding bond ordinance of the city of Bayonne in the county of Hudson State, New Jersey, providing for one, the refunding of certain outstanding school refunding bonds of the city dated January, June 10, 2015, to provide for debt service savings and authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $13,500,000 aggregate principal amount of school refunding bonds of the city to effect such refunding and appropriating the proceeds thereof, which was introduced and passed first reading at a meeting held February 17th 
was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin board as required by law with no, notice that it would be further considered for final passage following the public hearing at this meeting and is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution moved by council member Perez giving the ordinance second reading. Mr. Carroll, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. Second reading is by title. It's a refunding bond ordinance of the city of Bayonne in the county of Hudson State in New Jersey, providing for the refunding of certain outstanding bonds, school refunding bonds of the city dated June 10, 2015 to provide debt service savings thing savings and authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $13,500,000 aggregate principal amount of the school refunding bonds of the city to effectuate such refunding and appropriating the proceeds thereof. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. There are no hands raised at this time. Protest against objections to or statements in favor of this ordinance has been filed with me, or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? So moved. Second. On the motion to close, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. And resolution ordering final passage. So moved. Second. And on the resolution for final passage, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. So four is an ordinance adopting the redevelopment plan for the property located at 1099-1105 Avenue C and 6658 Street, which is identified as Block 34, Lots 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30, as shown on the official tax map of the city, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law NJSA 40A colon 12A-1 exec which was introduced and passed at the first reading at the meeting held February 17th and was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin report as required by law with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following public hearing at this meeting of March 17th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution giving the ordinance second reading is moved by council member Perez. Mr. Lapalusa, will you second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. B before second we go reading. to, okay, sorry again. As the second reading is an ordinance adopting the redevelopment plan for the property located at 1099-1105 Avenue C and 66-68 West 54th Street which is identified as block 34, lots 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30, as shown on the official tax map pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law. The council is ready, now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. Um, I would like to say something first on this. Um, I had a, I would like to consider this um, resolution or this ordinance under the guise that um, right now it doesn't have a requirement for um, commercial. I myself had reached out to our city planner and she told me um, at least two other council people had um, reached out to her um, with an interest in having a um, commercial part in this building. It is in an area which in that's how they're going in the zoning is where it's, you know, like commercial or, or um, retail, I should say, not commercial. Um, and uh, the planning board had every member of the planning board had recommended that a retail space be included in the bottom of this building. And um, so I am asking the council. And I also had a call today from a gentleman who currently um, has a business in this building and he's a viable business and he would like to stay in the area. So it isn't like a business wouldn't be supported there. He is a tenant in, in here. So, um, 
I'm just asking um, that we would consider it with the change in this ordinance when we vote on it, um, as if my colleagues agree, with having a, you know, making the a retail space of a minimum of, um, usually we do a thousand square feet, but I realize it's smaller than 800 square feet of uh, retail at the bottom, on the bottom floor, to keep the um, integrity of the area, that neighborhood there where people walk to stores and, and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just asking my colleagues if they're good with that. So just repeat what you're like, what you're saying, you want us to say it has to have commercial? Yeah, I want to say shall. Um, I talked with the city planner. She thinks it's a reasonable uh, ask. Uh, like I said, the whole entire planning board did ask to have that put in, but didn't make it a requirement. Um, I had a current business there, Jay, uh, the, uh, he owns the liquor store there and uh, he would love to stay in that neighborhood. I'm not saying that they have to give a lease to him, but it isn't like they wouldn't be able to. I mean, it's kind of about keeping Bayonne walkable and, you know, neighborhoody and having not just, you know, buildings. I, I think um, we all, all the buildings we have, we have um, that we have approved that have been bigger buildings all have retail on the bottom um, to kind of keep it being neighbor, you know, keeping the community kind of um, feel. Well, the only thing I want to say is, like, if we're going to require them to do this, I realize this is a redevelopment plan, but there are homes all around that area that are facing Avenue C that are residential. There's no commercial there. And there's plenty of other stores around that. So I don't see if the guy, the, what I, I talked to some of the builders, I talked to the engineers, the planners. I was one of those people probably that, that you're mentioning. Um, and from what I know is the builder, I don't know if he wanted to put commercial in there and it was forced to kind of, not forced, but uh, it was but, included in the plan. Okay, Mr. Lopalooza, you're exactly right. He, he, it is the city's choice, not the builder's choice. <laughs> I, what we I get it. goes there. And the problem is, is I don't understand why we, there's a, a, a real valuable, at least one he'll call, you know, and I, I believe he's listening that has a viable business in Bayonne. I don't know why we were, why we would be encouraging losing business. We always talk about all our stuff saying we want to bring business into Bayonne. We want, we, we don't, we don't want all retail. We don't want all residential. Where's the business? Where's the jobs? Where's the, this, where's the, that, this is the perfect opportunity where we, we already know that there are viable businesses there that aren't looking to leave. And they would like to stay in that neighborhood. And, so that's my point. We're, we, we're always, and, you know, there are, you know, I always hear a lot of my colleagues always saying about, well, you know, I'm always much better when there's jobs creation, when there's this, when there's that. And now we're actually taking away that, like, from somebody, like, their livelihood and, 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 and then saying we don't, we're not looking to replace that with any, not it has to be the same business, but we're not looking to replace it with anything. We're, we're, you know, a viable. So, I mean, I, I understand what developers have, but we always, we, we don't always give them all exactly what they want. You know, we always make concessions. We've knocked down building heights. We knocked down the number of park, increased the number of parking. Um, you know, I mean, we can ask um, Sumac, you know, the city planner to give her opinion and what conforms with, uh, Sue, what do you think? Um, what's your professional opinion on uh, this as you're the expert? Yeah, thank you, council president. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. can you hear me? Oh, great. Um, so this came out of the, the um, planning board received a plan, which was for residential only, and they voted unanimously to put back in neighborhood commercial, which is what is the zone there prior to the redevelopment plan. So I made the amendment so that it could be neighborhood commercial, but neighborhood commercial is um, just optional now. So the developer can either put in neighborhood commercial or he can put in all residential and he has the option and then after uh, council president re started to receive calls uh, she's discussed it with me and I said that and I, I know uh, councilman La Palooza you are on the planning board um, you can tonight because the council this is the council's plan you can say neighborhood commercial shall be required in the plan and then it's not arbitrary at, at this point in time I believe um, 
as you know, uh, Councilman Lapalooza, and also I spoke to Councilman Glaze on it. Um, it. It would be it would be up to the developer to either do put in the neighborhood commercial or not, and just do residential. And um, what Council President was expressing was that she thought that the council should require something, some commercial element on the ground floor. And um, I just gave her my professional opinion how to do that is that you would just say neighborhood commercial shall be required and versus just make it neighborhood commercial zone. Right. But but Sue, if I, as one of the council people require that there's commercial that will change the parking and will change the parking ratio. And well, I, you are I, aware of that I, because I spoke to you about that as well. Yes. And actually, Councilman Lapalusa, you were the one who first made me look at the whole plan uh, closer because mm -hmm. you had questions on it. Neighborhood commercial does not require parking because it's considered to be it's considered to be a walkable community. So for for under under 2,000 square feet in any place in Bayo, neighborhood commercial does not require parking. We put in the plan that you would have to have. If you did do neighborhood commercial, you would have to put in one space per 500 square feet, and we did that because we want to we want to account for the employees that would actually operate um, operate that business if they were there. So actually, our plan puts in more parking than is actually in the current zoning ordinance. And as uh, Council President said, she's discussing only putting in 800 square feet. So we're talking about one to two parking spaces. And that's that's already required in the plan. <clears throat> so, uh, how does the rest of the council feel? Wasn't there supposed to be an attorney for Denoid speaking today? We're talking about what we're putting forward. Juan, he'll speak next. He's not the attorney, but this is about what we're going to put what what we're putting in it. So, this is what it's it's. It's what the city, what we want to recommend, and what we think the that area needs from a city perspective, from our what what goes with our master plan, what 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 fits the neighborhood, you know, um, you know, Gary, it's, it's it's your ward, it's your neighborhood. I, I know, you know, it's kind of similar to the uh, the red next to phase two, a little bit like that, you know. Um, well, it's half yeah, the height. Well, well, I think one's a two floor <laughs> difference, but one's in the CBD and one's not. They're, so. they're both, they're all in the UEZ zone. That's a UEZ zone as well, up on Avenue C. Uh, it's, hmm. yeah. So I don't know. That's just my, that was just my recommendation. I don't have an issue with uh, uh, commercial or non commercial. Um, but the way it was presented was non-commercial and the planning board put commercial back in the, as an option mm -hmm. as an option as yes. an option and then but it's ultimately up to, it's our final call on what this what we would like to see i know we've always been lax but we get to you know kind of design our neighborhoods and whether you want to lose commercial or not lose um retail in in a neighborhood so can you speak to the parking again so if it's re remains optional you get what and if it's mandated what has to change specifically okay thank you councilman so currently under your zoning or zoning if you're in the neighborhood commercial zone you do not require parking because neighborhood commercial can only be 2,000 square feet. They, neighborhood commercial isn't, a, you know, it's not a bank. It's it's a small shop, and and that's based on in our zoning that you would walk. The people in the neighborhood would walk there. When we looked at the plan and the count, the planning board asked us to put neighborhood commercial back in. We exceeded our own zoning and said for every 500 square feet, and and these buildings would only this facility would only be like it wouldn't be more than a thousand square feet so there would be two parking spaces required and in that in that plan you have shared parking so you know people go out in the morning and go to work the people who would be working there could use those spaces so at a maximum we would be adding two parking spaces to 
be required by the developer. It's not more than that because they can only have a very small facility. Um, and does so, the neighborhood lose any spots on the street given either design? If no, there's actually, a change tonight, does, go ahead. No, actually, um, the way Dunoy is now, and I'm sure we've all been to Dunoy several times, uh, they have a very wide driveway on uh, on the side street. That's where you park, and it's it's like a triple driveway. And with the new building where, where they have the parking, the building will take not only Dunoy, Dunoy's parking lot, but the next house down. So uh, they will have they will have access through you know a controlled driveway, and, and the um, the public will actually I believe gain two spaces back on the street, which they haven't had for many years. So, so the motion would be to amend the to say shall the resolution um, to say shall contain. Right. So it, we would add it to um, the last whereas clause, uh, whereas the city council believes that the preparation of a redevelopment plan uh, containing a commercial component is in the best interest of the city for the redevelopment block 56, blah, 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 blah. And then again, in section four of the resolution, it would say, is it authorizing director to prepare, prepare a redevelopment plan? Which redevelopment plan shall have a commercial component for all the properties located at <coughs> Jay, can I Jay, can I just offer something on that? Right. Good. Jay, the um the way the redevelopment plan, the, the planning board resolution that came to the council said that we should we should put back in neighborhood commercial in the plan, which I did. What I suggested to the uh, city council president is, is that that's arbitrary. You can say that it shall that it shall require neighborhood commercial instead of just it, you know just making it arbitrary. The word shall is prevailing in, in plans. It's, it means it shall be required versus. The question becomes: Is that a substantive change that requires a new hearing? I don't. I'm not. I'm not on. I'm not up to speaking on that. I just know that that we did revise the plan to put neighborhood commercial in based on the planning board uh, requirements. Jay, that's your call. If you think it's substantive, then it is. I, I'm looking at the. Well, we don't even know if they, if it's what we want want to do. I mean, I'm not I'm not mandating. I'm just saying that it is when talking to Sue, it, it became clear that it wasn't really a requirement because the last time it was so confusing because people were telling, no, it is required. Yes, it isn't. It is in there. It isn't. So it came up in conversation, and like she said, that was the recommendation of the planning board to put it in there, but the wording makes it optional. So, okay, so we're just looking to I clarify that. Approval does contain a component, for the planning board approval contains a commercial component, although not mandatory. So the motion would be to make that commercial component, albeit whatever size, a mandatory component, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So then the motion would be to amend section three. I'm sorry, two. Where it says the redevelopment plan designated for the properties identified as block 34, lots 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Um, on the official tax map, the city owned is hereby adopted uh, with this with the proviso that the redevelopment plan shall that the redevelopment shall contain a commercial component.
Okay, so the motion is to amend. Do we have a, actually, Council President Nadrowski has moved that. That language is acceptable, Sharon? That's fine, yes. Okay, so then we need a second on that. Okay, well, you, do you want to have a public hearing first before you actually institute that? that amendment? No, because I think the public hearing has to know what we're hearing on, okay. right, Jen? Is that it? Well, I, I'm there, looking for. There, there is a there. There would be a public hearing, uh, essentially on the change. Also, if if you if you want to add this in now, the public hearing would be on the completed. Uh, All ordinance. right. So the, the the motion would be before this goes any further to amend the ordinance to reflect that there shall be a commercial component to the re redevelopment plan, um, and you're not going to provide what size, it has to have a commercial component. Um, and if that's the case, then we need a, you have a motion, we need a second and have a vote on the motion to amend and then I think you'd have the public hearing. Right, all right. Would we have a There's second on the, on the motion, motion to amend? Council President moves that motion, is there a second? No, so we'll just vote. Um, Okay, with no second, then that goes, so that fails, and then we go to uh, the public hearing at this point. I, I just get open up the public hearing. Okay, are there any speakers on this ordinance? We've got a couple. Um, first off, Mark Gribbler put in a, uh, to a chat to me that he wanted to speak. Uh, Mark, you yeah. are actually unmuted right now if you wanted to speak. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Mark Ribbler, MGS Studio. We're the architects for the Denoy Group. Um, in the context of the discussion of the commercial space, if you look at the plan, the building proposal included a ground floor space captive to the building for an exercise slash gym facility captive to the building, which is amenable to of course, being a commercial space, that's a business decision. Um, for the I, I'm sorry, can you clarify then? Um, oh, well, it has to conform with the plan, right? The city does get some say in what, what's allowed. Of course, of course. But, and actually, we have the final say, you know, in what it's going to be. But you're saying that that's not really commercial. Are you telling me that gym will be available to the public? I, I'm it's just closed gym from, for the from, the, from the planning standpoint, there is a shell space on the ground floor um proposed as part of the building as a, a gym captive to the building in the residence which is of a size that ms mack was discussing which from a business standpoint could certainly be a, a commercial space um and uh, again we'll gain two maybe even three cars in in um getting rid of the existing curb cut for the restaurant. As you know, on the west end of the 54th Street is where we have an in and out curb cut for the uh, building parking. So I'm just saying that the building itself will support the commercial piece if so required. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh... We have three other hands raised. First off, we have Vince Sicari. Uh, I'm counsel for Denoy, who is the builder. So if anyone from the public has a question or the council for that matter, um, I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have any questions at this time, but if we do, we'll certainly um, come back to you. Uh, was there another hand raised, Jake? Yeah, we've got two more. We have Peter Franco next. Okay. Hey, good evening, City Council. Uh, happy uh, St. Pat's. Thank you. Same to you. All right. So I just wanted to thank you, Council President. I really applaud you uh, for fighting for small business and putting this amendment in the plan to uh, hold the developer to his word. Um, I know this area very well. As you know, I moved uptown, um, you know, and um, literally right around the corner. Uh, so I like the idea of development because that area is blighted. There was a horrific murder uh, a little over a week ago over there. Um, you have a large congregation of temporarily homeless people in the area. 
Um, you know, and I'd like to see, you know, maybe it'd be nice if the developer uh, would be willing to kind of give something to that area. Um, I necessarily don't think a gym, uh, you know, I mean, you have a gym, uh, retro fitness, uh, three blocks away, um, you know, keeping in theme with the restaurant um, or it's something that ties into uh, to the neighborhood. You have a recently new hardware store a block away. Um, the, that area of town really needs life to it. So this commercial component is uh, very, very vital. Uh, and so uh, I really appreciate it, Council President. Um, I'm happy with you on this one. So thank you. It must be St. Patty's Day, luck of the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but Peter, we didn't make it mandatory. The, the motion I made didn't, didn't pass, so you understand that. It's optional, uh, it's still optional. So. Oh, well, well then, uh, I could, so here's the thing. I would pitch to the other council members to really stand with you on this. I think this is, uh, you know, it's important, uh, ultimately. Um, I also, um, so I, I'm kind of curious with Mr. Lapalooza, what is the only, uh, the only time he's ever took uh, the side of development? You know, it seems like, like this is in his neighborhood, um, you know, ultimately, and he's, he's kind of siding with the developer almost on this. No, I didn't say who I was siding with, so I don't know if you're putting words in my mouth, and I don't think that's right of you to do that. Well, no, listen, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. It just seems like, you know, wouldn't you be for, um, you know, this amendment? Um, I have to tell you, I see the area. I want new building in that area, okay? As far as there being commercial, Right across the street, there's two family and one family homes. So as much as you might say that there might be one or two stores going away, I think those stores are actually relocating in the area to places that aren't businesses now. So something positive is going to come out of that. Well, I mean, you know, obviously the people in that area, I mean, I live right around the corner. So, you know, but um, to me, uh, you know, you need that commercial component here. And uh, for it to just be suggested, you know, the developer's not gonna, you know, if it's not legally binding, nobody's gonna do anything. I mean, we know this, you know? But like I said, right on the next corner, there are residential homes. This is gonna be residential. It's not taking that much commercial off, especially if those are relocating right across the street or right around the block. And that's what I've been told. So. I want to see something new go there. I think that's the most important thing right now is to get rid of some of the blight and get that new development. And it's not as tall as some of the uh, other developments that I was against. And a lot of what I was against in the past has been the height of those buildings. And this kind of falls in line with what the height of the buildings were on Broadway all along for like the last, whatever, 70 years or so. Gary, Gary, you, you know that area. I, you know, I, you might have trouble renting those apartments, to be quite honest with you. That is probably one of the, the hardest hit parts of town. I mean, you go there, I come back on my commute, I'll stop at Herbs Liquors, and, you know, you could see, uh, you know, just the, the, the area needs help. It needs a shot in the arm, but it also needs business, you know, and, and yeah, sure, a business can be re relocating or whatever. What, what are we doing? You know what I mean? I thought you were a guy that was big on business, you know. Well, I'm a guy and, and who wants to have new people come in to revitalize the whole area because if you don't have new people and the density that we always talk about in the master plan, there's not going to be enough people to uh, support those businesses. And those businesses are still going to be in that area from what I've been told. So I think the revitalization is going to happen when those people move in and gentrify the whole area. Well, if it wasn't profitable for Denoy, and they and then and the people couldn't sustain it. They would have moved already, right? Instead, oh, you know, we're redeveloping. Resnick would have moved too, but now you got a hundred more families in there. So that's the debate. Is you know, I've been hearing this with every building that's been built by St. Joe's, uh, all over the town. That are these apartments going to be filled? And they're filling them everywhere. Uh, so, well, well, that's debate. That's debatable. But I don't want to get sidetracked on this. I just, I really hope that you consider. Um, you know, holding the uh, developer, you know, locked in here. So, um, you know, it's the only way it's going to ultimately get done. Um, you know, uh, there's no guarantee that if we, if you voted on this project now that, you know, the, the folks that said they're going to relocate or whatever, there's no guarantee that they're actually going to do that. So I just think, look, we know how this works. If it's not set in stone, 
Um, you know what I mean? Plans will change. The developers, will, uh, you know, they'll scapegoat out. So. Well, I gave you my view, and that's how I think. So thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. We have other hand? one hand raised, and that is Jay Borker. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you, Council, for having me here. Uh, luckily, I share my name with Jay Coffee here. So you got uh. two Jays today. Uh, I spoke to uh, I spoke to Sharon earlier today, and Sharon, thank you for getting me uh, giving me all the information to get on this call. I really wanted to speak to the council about uh, the, the the commercial uh, aspect to the the building. Uh, as as you guys have probably heard, I am the owner of one of the locations that that's going to be affected once this building comes in. Uh, as you mentioned, Gary, yes, I do have no other choice but to relocate uh, if 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 that does happen, right? I'm I'm very excited to be honest with you that the, the this new uh, project is coming along. Uh, I do certainly agree with the council that you know we could do with a, a good looking building, more people coming into the area uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 gentrify the area. Uh, that being said, you know. We for over 10 years now that business has been there for over I, I want to say 20 years uh, I don't want to see businesses moving out of that location right I don't want them to be forced to be moved out of that location I'm not saying that I want a commercial space there for myself but I think it's very important uh, that once you have a, a better looking building you bring in better looking businesses to bring more people into the area right that's how you bring more people into the community uh, so that's why I think uh, what I'm trying to implore this council to do is to at least mandate the de developer to uh, to have a commercial property uh, location at the at, on the first floor, uh, so that if not me, somebody else can come in into this brand new spanking building and then uh, provide service to the community with a brand new business that they are uh, able to open there. And thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, at this time, there are no more hands raised. Okay, with that, I'll take a motion to close. So move. And second. Nobody wants to close the hearing? I think, he, I think Neil said second, did he? Did you? I was oh. muted, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, and on the motion to close, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Najowski? Aye. And a resolution ordering final passage. So moved. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Najowski? I'm disappointed we're not mandating the commercial, but um, I vote aye. Well, five is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne, Chapter 30, Storm Water Control, which was introduced and passed for the first reading at the meeting held February 17th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law, with notice that a further consideration for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of March 17th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And the resolution giving the ordinance second reading, Mr. Lap is moved by Mr. Lapalusa, who would like to second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne, Chapter 30, Storm Water Control. The council president is now ready to interest, the council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. Okay, we just got one hand raised and that's uh, Michael Resigno. Hello, Mike. Mr. Rasingno, how are you? We can't hear you, Mike, if you're speaking. Mike, you're still self-muted. You just need to unmute yourself. All right, I'm good. There you go. We hear you now, Mike. 
There you go. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all the lassies and lads out there. Same to you, Sarah. Thank you. Yes. I want to say with the uh, combined to overflow, you are doing a tremendous job at Fitzpatrick Park. If people could go by there across from the shop right, that's where Fitzpatrick Park is by City Hall. It is amazing. The sewer lines they're putting in there and what they've done and the work they can see that the city's doing to do the combined sewer overflow. And they're cutting the corners up. And I mean, it's just, it, it, it's really amazing. And I think you should promote that more to let people know that you are cleaning the waterways in Bayonne as a peninsula city, because the work I see going on there is just tremendous. And then also Collins Park, and then the great work you've done at uh, Ahern Stadium, and even at 16th Street Park. Uh, so I think you should work on promoting that a lot more, but yes, the combined sewer overflow uh, changing the laws and all that stuff is terrific, and I'll give you a thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say um, that is true, Michael, and I, I want to give a shout out back to Michael because him and his nature club clean up our shorelines. He's out there all the time, winter, spring, summer, fall, rainy days, cold days, snow. I've seen him out there. Um, so thank to you and your club for keeping our shorelines clean and getting out there and doing the dirty work. Anyone else? I was going to say a big hand for Sal, who fought so hard to get moving on Fitzpatrick Park, too, is not here. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Jake, there's no one else? No, not right now. Um, we do have a request from Peter. He wants to be the first to speak for the public speech, speaking portion of the meeting, so just uh, note it. Okay, that's fine. Okay. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? So moved. Second. On the motion to close, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lavalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. And resolution ordering final passage? So moved. Second. Second. On the final passage, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. Six is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne chapter seven traffic. It deletes 10 parking, restrictive parking zones. And it was introduced and passed a first reading at the meeting held February 17th, it was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin board as required by law. With notice that it would be further considered for a final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of March 17th and is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And the resolution moved by Councilmember Perez, giving the ordinance second reading. Mr. Lapalusa, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. And second reading is by title and the ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 7 traffic. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. All right, there are no, no hands raised for this at this time. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? So moved. Second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. And resolution ordering final passage. Second. Second. On the mm. resolution, Carroll? Aye. 
Ms. Lapalusa? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Najowski? Aye. Okay, and now we're opening for public comments. Okay, uh, and that being said, again, first we've got Peter Franco. Uh, good evening again, uh, City Council. Can, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, so listen, I, I was a little disappointed that I read the agenda and uh, a resolution I submitted for review didn't quite make the cut, but I'm the ultimate optimist and I uh, hope that uh, after this speech, uh, we could get it walked on towards the end of the meeting. So um, listen, it's, it's time to abolish. Oh, I, mean, I first just want to acknowledge Council President Nadrowski for uh, you know, getting back to my email. Uh, she was the only um, elected official that got back to me. So um, I appreciate that and thank you for your consideration. And um, Neil, I shot you a text, but um, I don't know if you, you got it or not, um, but I didn't get a, get a response from you. Um, it's time to abolish the influence of the county line and restore the power of our vote. You know, government should be of the people, for the people, and by the people. Nowhere in the federal or state constitutions does it give greater power to our mayor or political bosses than that of our voting power. Yet we know the influence of the county line determines the election victor, and it's not right. As many of you know, our mayor, Jimmy Davis, announced he would not be supporting the re-election of our assemblyman, Nicholas Chevrolet, and encouraged the Hudson County Democratic Organization to remove Chevrolet from the line. If our mayor has his way, Bayonne would lose tremendously, replacing Chevrolet, the majority whip in the state assembly, acting floor leader for a political newbie with zero legislative experience. A gentleman who couldn't even be bothered to vote in general elections 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2019, missing three of the last four races for state assembly for the same exact state assembly seat that he's seeking. Now, Everyone with half a brain uh, could see that this decision puts Bayonne in a bad position, all except this egotistical, insecure mayor who is so clueless, he actually believes this is politically smart. This proves two things, though. It proves his, his incompetence and his willingness to put his politics over the residents of the city of Bayonne. It should be our decision as voters, not the mayor's, to determine who, to determine our representative's faith. Thanks to the county line, Bayonne voters will be at a severe disadvantage in this Democratic primary election. You know, and here's why. A respected policy firm had reviewed the impact of the county line influence on local elections. From the ballot design, which encourages voters to pick the candidates on the line because they're easy to find and visually more distinct, to the placement of better known candidates, for example, this year is our governor's race, and if you like the job Governor Murphy has done, you would be more inclined inclined to vote for him to build upon his success. However, if you vote down the line this time, you would be voting for change in your assemblyman. This firm also looked at the impact of the ballot design and how spreading candidates across multiple columns or rows or placing extra columns or rows between them makes it harder for the voters to determine which candidates are running for which office, which then ultimately leads to disqualification of votes because you voted for you know, uh, uh, two people for the same position. This isn't baseless theory. Um, I'm coming from a genuine place on this. Whether or not um, this decision by the mayor uh, was made, I still would have pushed for this. I'm not somebody that, uh, I, to be quite honest with you, I've never voted for Nicholas Chevrolet. I've worked two campaigns against him, but <laughs> what this comes down to ultimately is no matter where you stand politically, you always need to stand with Bayonne. And this is a bad, bad decision. You know, th this, there's evidence here that substantiates, uh, you know, what, what this firm had said. No state legislative incumbent on the line had lost a New Jersey primary election between 2009 and 2018. They go on to state, although incumbents generally win re-election, that advantage is rarely absolute. In Bayonne's case, the powers to be want to replace our assemblyman, and they are doing so by removing him from the county line, thus making the case. So since our mayor has demonstrated that he is operating from ego and absolutely incapable of making smart political decisions with Bayonne's best interests at heart, we must hold them accountable. No longer can he be trusted with such influence over our right to vote. This is why I introduced a resolution to the Bayonne City Council members uh, for their review in this caucus hearing. This would give our elected officials uh, ultimately the, the power to, stay to, the, to say to the state and the county that we're not standing for this. We know this is wrong. Um, 
you know, if an elected official was doing a terrible job but had the county line, voters would be at a disadvantage to get rid of him. And why should bad politicians be protected by the line? Conversely, why should good candidates and progressive ideas be at a disadvantage on the ballot based on a select small group of power brokers who carry the influence of the county line? Uh, in closing, the voters uh, should have the ultimate power. Your vote would send a suggestion to the state, county, that the, that, as well as Jersey City, that it's time to abolish the line and restore our power of voting. Thank you. Are you asking, is that it, Peter? Uh, yes, yes, Council President. Well, I didn't know, were you asking us if we were voting, you asking us to walk it on? Is that what are you saying? Is it, I'm not, I didn't understand. Are you just making your statement? Um, no, actually, I'm asking you to walk it on. Um, you know, when I, when I sent uh, the email in, you know, I thought I did a good job putting it together. Um, I would like it to get walked on or at least be considered for that. Uh, you know, this is, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, the right thing to do here. Uh, you know, it's not it's, it's not one person's decision or one person's authority. You know, you're our, our governing body as well. And, um, you know, if if the mayor is going to use his power and position to put politics over the people of Bayonne, I expect the city council to turn around and stand up for the people. But, I would hope that you would consider this, um, you know, it would, it would mean a great deal. It wasn't himself. Uh. Okay, somebody's not on mute. Okay. But so yes, anybody... I, I would appreciate it if, you, if you would walk it on. Thank you. Do any of my colleagues want to make a motion to pass Mr. Walk something on. Uh, then oh, that would be a no. Okay. Any more comments? Yeah, we've got one other person with a hand raised, and it's Melissa Kudeski. Hi, City Council. How are you all doing tonight? Very good. How are you, Melissa? Well, thank you. Um, so. Recently, I, I learned that Bayonne is getting $39.2 million, which I'm sure you guys are ecstatic about. And as a resident, I am too. We're, we're a deserving city. Um, I love the city with all of my heart. My son loves the city with all of his heart. And our city has had such a negative, imp like we've all been negatively impacted in one way or another due to the pandemic. So I had a few questions that I would be wondering if you all would just maybe um, share some of your insights on um, and share with us kind of what you're going to plan on doing and distributing um, because I'm sure we're businesses, residents, and the community alike is super excited. So um, my first question would be, um, would any of you be willing to share what your vision is on how this money will be equally distributed and appropriately distributed to some of the community's residents and small businesses? Um, the second one would be, can and, and this is because I just genuinely don't know, is any of this additional funding going to go to the Bayonne educational system or has that money already been allocated? Um, but I, I would love to hear kind of where you all stand with this because this is exciting. Again, the second highest amount in Hudson County. Um, and there's a, yeah, oh, okay, Melissa, I'll, I'll talk, speak to it first. I don't know. So there are, we just can't do whatever we want with that, right? The, um, there are guidelines, which I was reading with, and I actually had a discussion today uh, earlier with um, Councilman Lapalooza. I did try to have a conversation with Mr. Carroll, um, but I told him I'd call him back because I was taking Mr. Lapalooza's call because we had playing photag for a while. And um, yeah, as you know, there we go. So as you know, um, and I, my suggestion was to Mr. Lapalooza and Mr. Carroll here now that we should actually have a committee and I was recommending that two council people be on it being Mr. Carroll, I, I didn't ask him, I'm sure he wouldn't mind, and Mr. Lapalooza to work with the administration because quite frankly, it's once we accept that money, the council no longer really has a lot of say in it, just like a budget. We pass a budget and we give it and we have intentions of, to be spent on something, but the administration in the end can spend that money on more hires or whatever they want. But there is guidelines in there, infrastructure stuff we can do. And um, 
uh, you know, the infrastructure can be helping our water system, which we know we have a big um, requirement for that. Some of that money can be used for that. I like to see part of it go to that. Um, I also, you know, putting 5G all around town. It's supposed to go to things that'll help, you know, that things that were affected during, you know, that people didn't, couldn't get on Wi-Fi, making our whole entire town available for anyone, no matter what your home life is like, that you, you can have Wi-Fi, right? Even if you don't have service at home and, and that. A lot of our students had that issue where they didn't have good internet at home. So stuff like that, um, police communications systems can be upgraded. Uh, we're doing that already. We had bonded for that, so I don't think that's necessary. Um, but there's also a component in there where we can give um, to businesses that have been impacted. And that's definitely something that um, I'm confident that we are going to look to do. And I'm sure the mayor's on board with that too. There is also, you know, the ability, um, there are a lot of, uh, I don't think, I, I, I really didn't completely read it all. I read it, I, bre I breezed over it and um, all the instructions on what's valid and what's not. I don't think we can give to the school. I'm not sure if that's included. I don't know um, our CFO Donna Mowers on if she can um, go um, t speak to that. I'm not really sure. I didn't see that explicitly in there, whether it was permitted or disallowed. Um, of course, we always work with the school and try and um, give as much as we can um, to the programs, but um, you know, there are a lot of things we have talked about. And there's also like stuff we could do for affordable housing too, which um, is something that I'm particularly interested in um, because a lot of people have been affected, whether it's just, you know, upgrading some of our affordable housings, making them a little bit nicer. Um, that's a possibility also, which I am definitely um, was something I would like to focus on. I don't know if my colleagues, um, I don't want to, you know, have anything else to say? I think Mr. Lapalooza wanted to speak on something. I can't hear you. You might be on mute, Gary. Shit. No, Gary, you want to fix? We can't hear you. Um, Neil, Mr. Carroll, do you want to speak Why, Gary try and fix your mic? Or Absolutely. First, I, I really appreciate that, Council President. I would, if we do uh, form that group, I would love to serve on it. And I think you hit on every uh, issue that would be of top priority, especially um, helping small businesses and uh, providing some kind of direct relief uh, on top of what's been provided by the federal government. I think it's a, of key importance. So, absolutely. Councilman Perez, do you have anything to add? I know Gary's. Back I don't in. Agree with Neil and yourself, you pointed out a lot of good issues that we can spend that uh, those funds that we got from the federal government, which is good, and especially uh, affordable housing that you just explained, because nobody, I mean, everybody here in Bayonne can't afford a 1,400, 1,500 uh, a rental unit, so, you know, which is good, and uh, that's what we need for the future of our people here in Bayonne. We're a blue-collar town. And one thing, uh, just so the public knows, it can't go for tax relief, right? It's that's act, that's the one forbidden one, and they made that quite clear in there. Um, you know, we we can't subsidize people taxes with it, um, just because I I know that's probably a natural question people are going to have. Thank you. And then, so with the committee swarm, which I think is a wonderful idea, I think you know two. The, the more brains that work together, I think the better the outcome. So two questions on that. Um, will this committee be part of making sure that this these fun, this funding is equitably distributed um, across you know different types of small businesses, the affordable housing, and making sure it is definitely getting to those businesses who need it uh, the most in Bayonne? Will that be a priority? So I see, I'll, do you want me to take that? You can, or do you, you can talk, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I see your point. I think that for the sake of equity and uh, making sure that this happens in an appropriate fashion, there would have to be some sort of application process like there was the last time. Um, the last time we worked in concert with the county, this time, again, providing that this all goes forward and these committees are formed, et cetera, we would have to explore that to determine, A, 
would we partner with a group that has done it in the past and has experience doing it? Would we form uh, some version ourselves and, and look at it that way? But I don't think that one group should determine what is and is not uh, a worthy cause. I think we should make suggestions. And then by the time, if it does go down the line to businesses, there should be some kind of process for that that would involve the business directly. I just like to say, Melissa, I think every business that put in um, for some um, relief in the other grant programs, I think everyone got something. We, we, we lowered the amount to make sure no one went without. So uh, and everyone who applied really did get um, something in Bayonne if they were eligible. The, the eligibility requirements are up to us now, though, so we could probably maybe help people who weren't necessarily um, able to meet the uh, other guidelines, right? But um, that's a lot of it's still fluid, though, because it's very new and we got it. We're still reading through it. We're still going through the needs, um, you know, of, of what's best and looking at the things that need to happen. I think I could, uh, Gary, can you speak or no? Oh, nope. Okay. I don't think he wants to talk to me. No. <laughs> um, I, I think like that. That's this is wonderful to hear. Um, and my last question, and I'll let everybody go, is: Do you think that this committee could be made up of members of the public, um, whether it's you know some of the small business members, um, some other av av you know advocates that we have, um, advocates that we have in the city? Do you think that you'd be open-minded to maybe including them as part of that to? have different and diverse suggestions to ensure that you know the city of Bayonne is being taken care of um yeah. sure we the, the council um members would certainly meet and get your input the committee that we we're talking about would be more of an internal committee uh, that would be up to the administration you know uh the mayor's that would be the mayor's office call on the admin side if they wanted to involve um the residents and, and have some public input i mean i think it's a great idea but it's really not um our call i mean certainly um i i'm sure mr carroll and mr galace would gladly meet all of us can meet because we they'll they'll also keep us in and we'll get to Myself, Councilman Galise, and um, Councilman Perez will also be able to go back and forth and give them suggestions also. So you can reach out to any of us, and if you would like to have some summer meeting, that's absolutely doable. But again, to be formalized, it would probably have to come from the mayor, um, how he wanted to handle that. Completely understood. Um, thank you all for your time. And just one last thank you for getting the vaccinations going and partnering with the city of Bayonne and the Board of Education, because our kids need to be back in school and teachers need to be safe. And, you know, thank you for all your work on that too. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Now yeah. we can. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Any more comments? No, that is it. No, me. You okay? Me. Who's me? Mike Rasigno. Oh. oh. Oh, Mike. Okay, hi, Mike. How are you? Mike Rasigno's back. Do you have a comment, Mike? <laughs> he appeared in the attendees, and then he disappeared. Okay. Oh, there he is. Let me unmute him. Mike, you just need to unmute yourself. How's that? Very good. We can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Well, good. What I found very interesting was that everybody that wanted to speak on marijuana missed the O1, and they spoke on the O2, which when I was growing up was, we kind of forget things and miss things. Anyhow, just, that's just a little, you know, I'll leave that alone. But I want to comment really on this wonderful, library thing is terrific 
you people are doing the best 100 percent man the library is the biggest thing a city can ever do for its residents especially people they don't have access to internet or any of this new stuff that everybody or they don't have access to this stuff the library is access to a whole genius world it is so amazing that you're giving this money to it and building it up i am so happy and proud of it and i just want to say keep it up and man build that library and send people into it it's been so sad for a year they couldn't go there so now build it up and keep it going thank you all so much god bless you and happy st patty's day thank you have thank a good you. night Okay, Madeline, I think that's all the speakers. 07 is an ordinance for introduction uh, for the city of Bayonne County of Hudson, adopting the redevelopment plan for the property located at 7 New Hook Road, which property is identified as block 479, lot one, as shown on the official tax map of the city of Bayonne, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, and a resolution fixing Wednesday, April 14th, at 7 p.m. in the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Who would like to move it? Move it. Second. And on that resolution and introduction, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. I lost it again. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. Oh, eight is an order of the city of Bayonne County of Hudson adopting the redevelopment plan for the property located at 471 Broadway, which is identified as block 210. And the lot should read 2.01, 26, and 27, as shown on the official tax map of the city of Bayonne, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law. And a resolution moved by Council Member Perez fixing Wednesday, April 14th at 7, at 7 p.m. in the Dorothy e. Harrington Council Chambers with a time and place for a public hearing. Who would like to second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Mr. Perez. I'm reading, I'm reading <laughs> lips. Aye. <laughs> Ms. Nadrowski. Hi. What are your many talents, Madeline? Lips, I hear the marble shaking. I, I'm well trained these days. <laughs> oh, 09 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson approving the financial agreement buying between the City of Bayonne and the SWL Urban Renewal LLC for the property located at 69-71 New Hope Road. Um, which is identified as block 416. I have a discrepancy on the lots at this I, point. So I'm just I'm just gonna introduce it as block 416, possibly lots one and two, as shown on the official tax map of the city of Bayonne and a resolution moved by Council Member Lapalusa, fixing Wednesday, April 14th at 7 p.m. in the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Second. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. I want whatever anybody is thinking right now. <laughs> o 10 is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne, Chapter 4. License registration and business regulations. This is uh, fixing uh, section 4 29, which is the towing section. And a resolution moved by Council Member Perez, fixing Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. in the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Mr. Carroll, will you second? Second. And on the I... resolution? No. <laughs> Mr. Carroll. Am I, so I'm seconded. No, you're voting. You come back around to me for a vote, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. 
Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. O 11 is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bay on Chapter 7 traffic. It is deleting one restrictive parking zone and a resolution moved by Council Member Lapalusa fixing Wednesday, April 14th at 7 p.m. in the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Mr. Perez? Aye. 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 And Ms. Najowski? Aye. And consent resolution is moved by the council as a whole, ordering the following communications to be received and filed. It covers C1 through C35. Any questions on the communications? I've got nothing and in this time. On the communications, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Lapalooza? I think he jumped off. He's going to jump back on. Okay. We'll come back to him. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski? Aye. Officers' reports is a resolution moved by the council as a whole ordering the following officers reports to be received and filed and any resolutions incorporated within to be adopted. It covers OR1 through OR3. Any questions on the officers reports? Nothing at this time. Okay, and on that, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. And consent resolution for the resolutions is a resolution ordering the following resolutions to be adopted. It covers CR1 through CR26. It's moved by the council as a whole. Any questions on any of the CR's consent resolutions? I've got nothing at this time. Yeah. On the consent resolutions, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. We lost him again. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Najowski. Um. I, uh. With the aye. I just had a question. What the, re, the bid rejecting the bid for Holy Family wasn't in the consent, was it? No, no, that's okay. regular. Right. Yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> that's R one. Yes. Oh, there you go. First one. There you go. Sorry. Yes. I. Okay. It's rejecting the sole bidder for the renovations and alterations to the Bayonne Economic Opportunity Foundation for the reason the bids exceed the engineer's cost estimates. Would like to move it. Move it. Second. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Mr. Perez. Aye. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. I I'm I want to make a statement on this. Um, uh, this is very concerning uh, that we are. Um, rejecting the bid. I understand why we're rejecting the bid and we need to reject the bid because it's way over um, the, the what it should be that we can afford. But um, this project, we we purchased this property a full over two years ago and it's way behind schedule. Um, the, this was supposed to be open and have kindergarten in there at the very least the how the uh, office space should have been renovated. This when we did this project we purchased this the city purchased this school um we turned it over to the bof for um doing the renovations to make it our head start program and uh, move our bof offices there um and then the collateral is the three properties that bof currently uses and they will be sold to then pay back the debt for the holy family now the city is not really out money because um, bof does um make the scheduled payments for us. 
but that's three properties that are not on our tax rolls that they should be paying taxes I... when it's done. So I'm really concerned and I'm not sure what the delay is. And I'm asking for the director of BOF, Sam Howard, to provide this council because it is a city building and it is a city project. Um, and we have no idea what's going on. We see money going there. We spent over $500,000 already. And um, I think that got us asbestos removal. I mean, I know there's more to it, but we don't see all that. So I would ask that we get provided um, a report on uh, at least a quarterly report of what activities. And I would like a new detailed timeline of when exactly we can anticipate that this building is gonna be ready for use so that we could one, sell the properties and pay back the debt and get those other properties back on our payroll. And more importantly is to have this building functioning as what it was bought for, to expand our BUF um, services and to expand our Head Start, especially given getting over COVID, we have more people who fall in that category and are needing those types of services and we are not able to provide them. We have, there's a long waiting list for Head Start. And this was project was, we went for this and we purchased this property wanting to expand that and given that opportunity to more residents to satisfy that need. And I, I mean, two years is a long time. Um, and if maybe the city engineers, maybe the city should be take, you know, wants to, you know, help out on this. I don't know what the holdup is. Um, my understanding with these bids is it was bid out in a way that made it difficult for people to bid because they build the whole job as one, which is kind of unusual not my area of expertise, but again, um, I'm just making it known that I think the city needs to, you know, get a little bit of better understanding and a bit of um, transparency on where this project stands. And I would like the council to be given a report on um, the an updated t detailed timeline of where they see this project going and when we could um, anticipate some benefit to the community. I vote aye to uh, reject the bid. Or two is adopting the title, the title for uh, civil rights plan in accordance with the federal um, requirements. It's moved by Council Member Lapalusa. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. Or three is authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement with Fairview Insurance Agency Associates for professional risk manage management services for the period commencing January 1st, 2021 at a risk management fee of 3% of the city's new, um, NJIFF premium assessments for the calendar year 2021. It's moved by Council Member Lapalusa, who would like to second. 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 And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. Our four is moved by Council Member Perez, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement with John Polvich. Pul for professional engineering services on an on-call basis for a period of one year commencing January 1, 2020 for an amount not to exceed $15,000. Who'd like to second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. Five is moved by Council Member Lapalusa, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter an agreement with DMR Architects for professional planning services on an on call basis for a period of one year commencing January 1st for an amount not to exceed $15,000. Who'd like to second? Aye. Aye. Second. Any <laughs> Gary, your, your delay now is like 68 seconds. I just counted that. And watch you say aye, and then we've been getting these weird eyes all throughout this whole thing. It's 68 seconds there, so. You gotta just do the up or down. 
Yeah. It is. I'm just watching you yeah. actually like Caesar. You give the thumb right. up or the thumb down. No, no verbalizing. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Uh, Mr. Lapalusa. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nijowski. Aye. R6 is affirming that the council members have read at a minimum the uh, comments and recommendations of the section of the CY 2019 Aye. order and, and, <laughs> I can't. and an affidavit certifying that you have read, um, have done so. <laughs> Move it. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. No, he's not even oh, he's moving. He's frozen. He's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Perez. Hi. <laughs> Karen. Hi. Okay. Um, over the course of before Friday, everybody's gonna have to come in and sign Aye. it. <laughs> R7 is authorizing the third extension of agreement CY 18043 with Liberty Humane Society for a period commencing January 1 through April 30th, 2021 for an additional amount of $28,300, making the total contract amount not to exceed $242,908.30. Who'd like to move it? Move it. Move it. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Oh, that one came quicker. Mr. Perez. <laughs> Aye. Mr. Jowski. Aye. This is Samantha Mr. Howard. Can you all hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to work this thing. This is Samantha. And I wanted to. Uh, I apologize for just jumping in, but I wanted to address the uh, the BEOF and Holy Family. I know Sharon, you had some questions, and I'm prepared to answer those. Okay. Okay. So we are. We did receive and and have been aggressively writing grants, and we have received grants from the Head Start organization to to uh, renovate the school. And that is how we're moving forward with the school in regards to, as opposed to moving forward with the convent um, in that. And then working with Mr. Russo, as well as uh, Al Sambe, they did state that because this sole bidder was uh, you know, too high that it was recommended that we do consider moving out. We do have a deadline on spending this funding and Head Start knows about it, but we are prepared to move forward as soon as we get a bid that, you know, that is agreed upon from the architect, from the city, from all of those who, uh, and then from our board as well. And that is, um, that is gonna be as soon as this year. So that, I, I just wanted to give you that deadline and that update on where we are in that regard and then answer any questions beyond that that you might have for us. Well, I do have a question. I don't know if we want to get into it now, but uh, okay. So you're saying that by the end of the year, you mean we hope to have it bid out by the end of the year? I, I'm no, we, I'm, we're, we're I'm looking to have kids in the classrooms okay. and stuff like the, that. Yes, the Head Start program. We're hoping that we can get this bid uh, in as soon as next month. And the renovation will be moving forward as soon as everything is signed off and is prepared to go because we have the money and it's ready to spend. So we will be working aggressively on that through the summer, through the summer and, you know, putting it back. You're correct. We have spent, um, a, I think, about $500,000 in it when it comes to the renovation or the re remediation of the asbestos uh, and as well as the uh, removal and the update of the electrical. So at this point, what we're seeking to do is do the put back because all uh, asbestos has been remediated, the tanks have been removed, and we've received no further action letters in regards to that. So I just wanted to, you know, let you know where that five hundred thousand dollars has gone. Also, the phase one uh, environmental reporting has been completed at this point. 
Yeah, I did get a list um, of everything that all everything that went out from the city. So okay. I do know what went to DAL, what went to asbestos and new matrix. Uh -huh. So I did get that. My concern was I, I don't know, you know, what what exactly was done besides asbestos. And and the question is, is with the new bill, bid package go out, is it going to be one big package again? Um, it, you know, it will or is be it going package. to be broken out into different now, line items so that it can be uh, uh, I, I, my understanding is some people didn't bid on it because of it being one big package and, oh, um, and, and stuff like that, that, you know, it is. Yes. Yeah, so we, to we answer don't your normally question, bid out the city ones like that, you know, okay. Okay. um, now, okay. So I'm just following the lead of the architect as well as the engineer. And it was recommended that we did do it as a, as a big package. That was because initially I was going to do the roof. And then, you know, and then do the renovation on the inside of the building. However, it was recommended that we do it as one full package. So, mm -hmm. and as to my understanding, that, that's how that's that going to go. Is that the city engineer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, the city. And so, Rob Russo recommended that? That based on the my collaboration with Mr. Russo and Mr. Sambade, who was the architect on this, that was the recommendation. Okay, I just, I, I, my understanding was that that was part of the problem why we only got one bid. Okay. Was because yeah, it I, was one, one, it was bid as one project, mm -hmm. one package. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that, the one bid is way too high. So I don't know if we should take a different approach when we bid it out. So to get more competitive and more bids in general. But that's, you know, not my area of expertise. I'm like I said, I'm just concerned about the, um, <clears throat> the delays i mean i know some things were COVID, but it, it you know we expected this to be ready for last school year that was the original yeah that is correct and and we had put in for the um a grant for that um uh, head start on the fact that they had somehow tabled this and did not move forward with that in spite of all that we have done so you know and and they have you know let us know that so that was on on Head Start's fall, you know, part in spite of our efforts of moving forward, had written a very competitive and aggressive grant, and you know, and and the, a person left and came back on board and was very apologetic that it did not move forward. So, so one last question on that. I get I get about the uh -huh. Head Start grant money, and I know that has to be detailed line items in order for you to be able to you know draw down on that. But yes. um, but with regards to the offices, which is the old convent there, because if uh, that's not really tied into that, that's strictly other uh, other monies. So mm, that is correct. Um, can we move forward with that because at least that would alleviate two of the properties if we can move into there, um, two of those BUF properties, which really, you know, I know that's where you you're housed at. They're not really the most conducive work environment there. Um, is there a plan that, because that, that's what I mean, if you bid it out separately, could that work have been going on? Uh, no, and, and I'm, off? yes, and I'm sorry. And when you said together, I thought you were referring to the roof as well as the renovation of the school. We are not including the convent in this. So, so you're right. That is two separate bids. We are not including the convent oh, okay. in with this. So no, I'm sorry. When you said together, initially it was the roof bid as well as the renovation of the interior of the building. But that was re that was the recommendation that it be put those two items be put together to those two projects be put together. Okay, Sam, that's fine. I, we don't want to belabor this. If we could just okay. get if we could just get a quarterly report on what what the you know what the progress is being done to the council, that would be great. I will be happy to I get, go ahead. I'm sorry, had someone had a question? Yeah, no, I just and again, like the council president said, not to belabor it, but is there anything? Apart from the fact that you were given the recommendation, is there anything from the Head Start grant that precludes you from bidding it out any other way? Uh, no, there is nothing that precludes us from bidding it out any other way at all. So, you know, again, like I say, I was following the recommendation of the architect and the engineer saying that because I initially wanted to do the roof and then get the interior. And it was to my understanding, it would be more cost effective to bid these, the interior as well as the exterior and uh, together on the school. Thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you, Sam. All right, sorry for Thank interrupting. You. I couldn't find the button here. That's okay. It's been that kind of night with technology. Right, Ms. Palapalooza? <laughs> yes, he's there now. 
R8 is approving the temporary emergency number three in the county year 2021 budget. Would like to move it. So move. Second. Okay. And on that resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Oh, he's silent again. Mr. Aye. Perez. <laughs> Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. A. Car 9 is approving the budgetary transfer number two for the calendar year 2020. It has to be read in full. So it's resolved that the appropriations reserves transfers as set forth below pertaining to the calendar <coughs> year 2020 appropriations be in the same or hereby authorized and be further resolved by the comptroller that the comptroller be and is hereby authorized and directed to make the said transfers in accordance herewith. This is all coming from the current fund. It's tipping costs, twenty thousand dollars to the municipal court, other expenses, business administration, other professional services, thirty-eight thousand to water and sewer, salary and wages from the business administration, other professional services, one hundred thousand dollars to engineering services, other expenses. $100,000. So I'd like to move it. <clears throat> move it. So move. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. You're muted, Neil. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. R10 authorizes the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement with Urbac Uniform Services for uniform rental and laundry services for the Department of Public Works for a period of one year, commencing January 1, 2021, for an amount not to exceed $25,000. Move it. Moved by count. Right. Second. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. He's gone again. Mr. Aye. Perez. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. R11 is moved by Council Member Perez, authorizing an increase to the contract to purchase rock salt through the Hudson Port Robert <laughs> price system from Atlantic Salt in the amount of $75,000, making the total amount not to exceed $100,000. Who'd like to second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. <clears throat> Our 12 is moved by Council Member Lapalooza, authorizing Thomas Bergen, Esquire, and Kenneth Pearl. Poro Esquire from Chase and Lamparello, Malone, and Puzo PC to enter into a consent order specifically terms of settlement in the New Jersey Tax Court in connection with the matter known as 190 West 54th Street Urban Renewal LLC versus the City of Bayonne. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. 13 is moved by Council Member Perez, authorizing the tax assessor, the tax assessor, law director, and the special tax council to correct errors in the tax assessment, sign, sign stipulations correcting said errors, and file any settled municipal tax appeals on behalf of the city of Bayonne. Would like to second. Mr. Perez is not here. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. <clears throat> Aye. Okay, I have a couple of add-ons, and it's from the Honorable James M. Davis appointing Ryan Blake to the Zoning Board of Adjustments as ultimate number three for term to expire December 31st, 2023. Move it. Second. 
And on that one, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. Two authorizes the mayor to execute the option to renew agreement number CY15042 between Maria Sarabides trading as Let's Eat a concession for the lease of the Polish concession for a period of one year commencing May 1st, 2021 at a lease price. I want to make sure the lease price was the same amount. Uh, at the lease price of $8,222.22. And move it. So move. Second. Okay. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. And three is dedicating, declaring Saturday, April 24th, 2021, as the city's annual Earth Day cleanup. Move it. Second. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Yeah, aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. <clears throat> aye. And four is authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement for the advertisement kiosk administration to Capital Outdoors Inc. for the period of five years commencing from the date of the contract at no cost to the city. So moved. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. And at five is confirming and consenting the appointments of Cheryl S. Cashman and Susan Ferraro as municipal court judge, judges for a period of three years, commencing April 1st, 2021, and the continuance of Frank Farpenter III okay. as chief judge on a temporary holdover basis for a period not to exceed one year, pursuant to NJSA 2B 12-5 at SAC. That's... That was on the regular agenda. Well, it's consenting oh. to the- Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, move it. Second. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. That is all I have. Jay, do you have anything else? Other than wishing the eight ladies of the law department a uh, fabulous month and congratulating Sue Ferraro and also in this month for becoming a judge. No, I've got nothing else. Um, Jay, were we not going to, or maybe just an announcement about the outdoor dining? Um, we are going to allow the outdoor dining um, to continue. So if you had last year, we had waived all the outdoor dining fees and allowed in accordance with the governor's executive order. Uh, we are going to continue that this year and we are going to waive the fees again. You don't, if you already businesses who are already have applied and got their approval last year, as long as they are not expanding and they are staying within the same footprint, they don't need to take any other action than just to let us know that they will be doing outdoor dining. If somebody did not take advantage of it last year and would like to, they will have to come out and fill in the paperwork, but there will be no fee for it, but they will have to uh, fill in the paperwork and go on file with Madeline at the city clerk's office and, and our zoning that, that you are doing an outdoor and make sure that it complies. But again, there will be no cost. And if you had done it last year, we just ask you to notify us that you will continue. And as no, long as you're they, changing anything, they don't have to re certify right jay no, they don't they have to certify that they're not changing anything so oh, okay they'll just notify a zoning officer that we're going to have the same uh, footprint uh, but they have to start they have to file a document that certifies to that so that we don't have to worry. and and they also have to uh provide their updated insurance information correct. for this year correct there will be a letter going out in fact i have to help edit that and and that will notify the, the existing businesses of the 
their ability to re renew again this year under the same conditions. Yeah. And so I'll take. Go ahead. Nope. That's it. I was going to take a motion to adjourn. Move it. Motion. Move. And a second. 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 And on the motion to adjourn, Mr. Carroll. Aye. Second. Mr. Lapalusa. <laughs> All night. <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. Mr. Perez. Aye. Aye. And Ms. Nadrowski. Aye. And I again want to wish everyone a happy St. Patty's Day <laughs> and a wonderful International Women's Month. And let's have a good night. Gary, get that fixed. <laughs> Two o'clock this morning, we're in here. Thanks for the entertainment. <laughs>